Hi everyone and welcome back to another video of Architects 3D Printing. This is the second episode of the Cura Custom Settings series. In the last video, we had an in-depth analysis of the first tab of the Cura Custom Settings, that is the Quality tab. In case you missed that video, I strongly recommend you to watch it clicking here in the top right corner or well in the link in the description. In this episode, we are going to study the Shell tab, that is the second one in the Cura Custom Settings. To play with the settings, we are going to use a very famous 3D model that I have downloaded from Thinkiverse and needs the little bath tube task boat Visual Benchy uploaded by Vandragon DE. I will let you the link in the description to the Thinkiverse page of the model. Notice that we use the STL file called ship v3.stl. Before starting with the shell tab, I'm going to explain you something that I didn't explain you last week, and it's this visual analyzer from Cura. By default, we'll be activated the solid view, but we can change it both to X-ray view or layer view. We are going to work using the layer view, and here we have some options to show different parts of the print. We are going to deactivate travels, and instead of material color, we are going to select the option line type. Now we can difference in between the shell in red, the top and bottom in yellow, the inner ball that will appear in green, and finally the infill that will be represented in a light orange. Finally, the helpers are the skirt of the brim depending on what option we have activated, as well as the support. Alright, so once it's clear, we're gonna start with the in-depth analysis of the second tab of the custom settings menu, in CURA 3.2.1, that is the shell tab. We will examine the different options of the shell using the visual analyzer from Cura. For that, we are going to have a closer look right here in the top of the boat at the beginning. Once into the shell settings, by default, we'll be able to choose the wall thickness and the top and bottom thicknesses. At this point, we have to remember that we are using a 0.4 mm nozzle, that is maybe the most common nozzle size. So, to understand the wall thickness, if we look at the 3D representation, we can see that it has two wall lines, and that's because in the settings we have selected 0.8 mm, that is two times the size of the extruder, two times 0.4 mm. Concerning to the top and bottom thicknesses, this value is directly related with the layer height that was set last week in the quality tab. Since the layer height is 0.2 mm and the top and bottom thicknesses is 0.6 mm, as you can guess, we will have one, two, and three solid layers. So we have three solid layers in the top and in the bottom, being 0.60 mm, three times the 0.2 mm. Okay, so that was everything for this video. Please hit the like button, as well as in the quality tab. If we press here in this setup wheel, we will go to the settings visibility menu, where we will be able to activate more options. In this menu we will find main options and secondary options that will be directly related with the main option above. So wall extruder and the two sub-options below are only valid if your printer has more than one extruder and you want to choose for example one extruder for the infill and one for the walls or other combinations like one extruder for the supports and the other for the main object. We're not going to activate it since our 3D printer has only one extruder and we can really use these options. Next we will find wall thickness, the option that we have already seen and it has a sub-option called wall line count, so we are going to go for that and as you can see, since our 3D printer has a 0.4mm nozzle, if we write 0.9mm it's two times the nozzle, so we'll have here two walls. But if you don't want to be multiplying all the time, you can just use this option that we just activated where you can just write 3 instead of 2 and it will automatically put 3 wall lanes. And the 0.8mm commands was disactivated and we can't change it anymore. If we bring it back, we can get the same result that if we multiply 0.4mm of the nozzle by 3, that is 1.2mm, and as you can see, we will get the exact same result than before. So now it's completely up to you if you want to use this setting or not. If mats are not your strongest point, you can even disactivate the wall thickness and let activate the wall line count. 
what will result much more handy to lots of people. In my personal case, I'm going to disactivate this option since I prefer to see the millimeters. The next option will be the outer worldwide distance, something that I don't find relevant and we are just going to skip it. The next three options are also related with the multi-extruder through the printer setups, but it's not our case, so we are going to skip them as well. And down below we can find top and bottom thickness, the one that was also activated by default. As I told you, it's directly related with the layer height, so since it's 0.2mm and our thickness is 0.6, we'll have three layers. For example, if we have five layers, we'll have to multiply the layer thickness that is 0.2 by 5, what will result a thickness of 1mm. If we check it now, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 layers. Normally 0.6mm used to be a good value, but I even use a 0.4mm thickness in the bottom layers and 0.6mm in the top layers. But how can we change it? Well, if we press again in the setup icon, below the top and bottom thickness options we have two sub-options that have a sub-option each two. If we activate them, we will be able to choose separately the top thickness and the bottom thickness. So as you can see, this sub-option override the main option. And now I have two solid layers in the bottom and three solid layers in the top. Ok, so as well as in the wall thickness, here we can also activate the number of top and bottom layers, so we won't need to multiply. To activate or not this option is again completely up to you. You could even disactivate the millimeters option too and have only the number of layers, but again, I personally prefer to have the millimeters option activated only. If we continue, we will next find the top and bottom pattern. So if we go down to the very first layer, we will clearly see the different patterns that we can choose. By default the line options is activated, but we can also choose concentric, what will make an offset of the external shell down to the center of the object. You can try it out, it gives you cool results, but from my point of view, the lines option gives you a better result since in this option we will be able to see all the drawings in your horizontal layers. Finally, the last option is zigzag. It will make the pattern similar to lines, but this time all the lines will be a unique line that turns every time from the start to the end, making a continuous line. I will let the lines option activate it since it's the one I like the most. If we continue analyzing the different options, next we will find the bottom initial layer so we can choose a different pattern for the very bottom layer of the object and then select another pattern for all the other horizontal solid layers a good option would be to select lines in the top and bottom pattern option and then select zigzag in the bottom pattern for the initial layer since I think it will give us a better adhesion to the heated bed if we continue we will have the top and bottom line directions this option allows us to choose the direction of the lines by default it uses 45 degrees in respect to the x-axis and the next layer will be 135 degrees that is perpendicular and so on. If we modify this value we define the different directions of the patterns in the solid layers. For example we have chosen 90, 180 and 130. So the first layer is vertical, the second one is horizontal and the third one diagonal to the left. I like the default option of 45 and 135 degrees, so I'm gonna disactivate this option since I think I'm not going to change it ever. Next we have the outer wall inset, an option that we are not going to use, but basically it's only useful if you have chosen a thickness of the external layer different to the size of the nozzle. Then we will find optimized wall print order, a very cool option that will make our prints shorter in some prints. So my recommendation is that you activate this option and you can check in every different print if activate this option or not will reduce the printing time. In our case, if we don't activate this option the print will take 8 hours and 34 minutes and if we activate it the printing time will be reduced to 8 hours and 30 minutes so as we will save 4 minutes we will leave it activated. The next option is called outer before inner walls. This option only affects to the order of the printing. Let's have a look of how it works. First, with the option disactivated, if we simulate the print using the built-in simulator in Cura, we can see that first 
it prints the infill, then the inner walls, and finally the external shell. That's a method that I like since the layer that will be visible afterward will be printed the last one, so it will be more difficult that it receive any damage produced by the extruder. Anyways, if we activate this option and run the simulation again, we can see now that it will start printing the outer walls directly next to the infill and then it will print the inner walls. It can help improve dimensional accuracy in X and Y axis when using high viscosity plastic like ABS. But we have to be very careful with this option, since if our model has diagonal or curved overhangs, as it's the case in this model, as we can see, it will print the infill and then the external layers directly. And as you can see, in this simulation, it will print in the air, something that will be a fail in our print. Since I don't use to print in ABS, I'm gonna simply deactivate this option and eliminate it from the menu. Now I'm going to activate the next option, alternate extra walls. And what I will basically do is to alternate an extra inner layer every two layers, giving more addition in between the infill and the inner layers. I'm going to activate it since it will give us enough rigidity to the object and we are going to reduce the wall layers here writing 0.8 millimeters. That way we will keep having three layers but only every two layers, so we will reduce the printing time considerably without losing any quality. That's why I'm gonna let it activate it. If we continue, we will find this option compensate wall overlaps. By default it's activated and if we deactivate it, the first that I see is that the printing time is exactly the same and I don't really know what does this option change. So I'm gonna let it activate it and delete it from the menu. Continuing, we will find the option fill gaps between walls. That basically does is to increase the quality of the model in general. So I'm gonna leave it activated and I'm gonna continue with the options. Filter out tiny gaps and print thin walls are two options that are basically made for 3D models that are not optimized to print in any 3D printer with a 0.4 mm nozzle. For example, if the model has walls that are 0.3 mm, if we activate this option, the printer will kinda print it, reducing filament flow, and we can let it here in case we download a model that is not optimized. But what I strongly recommend you is to use an optimized model, and especially when you design a 3D model to print, you should design it thinking all the time in your nozzle thickness. The next option is horizontal expansion. This one is very useful if your printer is not perfectly calibrated as 100%. For example, if we measure the cube that we printed last week, that was 20 by 20 by 20, and the real dimensions are 19.6, 19.6 by 20, we just have to add 0.4 millimeters to the horizontal expansion, so we will get the perfect measures of 20 by 20. This option is also very useful in prints where we have snap fits, since using a negative value here, for example, minus 0.2 millimeters, will help the pieces to snap fit with each other. In my case, I don't use this option, since I make my 3D models optimized for my 3D printers, including the tolerances, and I recommend you to do the same with yours. Anyways, you can leave it activated if you want, just in case. The next option will do the same but only with the initial layer, something that you won't need if your bed is perfectly calibrated. And next we'll find Z seam alignment. This is a cool option that will modify where the external layer starts and stops. So for example, for this layer right here, if we simulate the print, when it comes to the external layer, it started right here and it's making a continuous light that will finish right here again. If we go for the next layer, it started in the same place and since it's located in a sharp corner, you will notice that the seam is there once the object is printed and that's because the sharpest corner option is activated. I basically think this one is the best option you can choose for every single print, even though you can also choose between random one or shortest what will reduce the printing time a bit. We can even specify the X and Y coordinates where the external layer will start, but I don't find this option useful. Next we have seam corner preference. I recommend you to activate this option and select hide seam. What it will do is to put the seams in the interior of the object and we won't see the difference from the exterior. There is not that much to change if we don't want to expose the seam on purpose. 
since we are going to use always the hide scene option, I'm simply going to select it and hide this option from the menu. Next, we can find a couple options that are not relevant and then we have enable ironing and ironing only in the highest layer. This is a very cool option that will affect our printing time but will give us much better results in our 3D models. As you can see, if we activate it, it will make the print one hour longer but what it will do is after printing the top layers, it will move the extruder in the top of it, ironing it and melting the lines together making a shiny surface. We are going to print the test cube from last week with this option activated and disactivated. And after that, I will show you the results that we got. Once we drop our test cube in Cura, we can see that with the ironing option activated, the print will be 34 minutes. And if we disactivate it, the print will take only 29 minutes. So what I recommend you is to only activate this option if you want a very good finish. This time I'm not going to use the 3D printer that I always use, since as you may have seen if you follow me on Instagram, I moved back to Spain for holidays and I'm gonna use a printer that is basically the exact same model, the CTC Prusa i3, but to which I have made a really high amount of modifications, so I'm gonna save the files in STL and I'm gonna leave you with the print. Okay, so here we have the two test cubes, this time printed in translucent red PLA, and as you can see, the quality is mostly the same in all faces, but with a difference in the very top layer. The layer that has the Z printed in is very different in both objects. In the one we printed with the ironing disactivated, we can appreciate the different lines that the nozzle used to print the top layer, and in the other one, we got a very shiny and soft surface more similar to the one we got in the bottom that as you can see is super shiny okay so guys start playing with the options we analyzed today and if you like the video please share it in your social media hit the like button and subscribe to the youtube channel clicking right here in this little icon to stay tuned for future projects you can also follow us on instagram or twitter at architects3dp and you can also consider to support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash architects3dp or while clicking in the link in the description. As a patron, your name will appear at the end of all my videos and you can also get cool advantages such as access to all the files generated in the videos, early access to some videos before they are published on YouTube, you can also get our architects3dp maker coin and more. Check out all the rewards in our Patreon page, navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp and you will help us buying more filament, bolts, nuts and of course motivating us to make more videos like this one. Okay, so now that was everything for this video and as always, see you guys in the next video.